ladies and gentlemen. We're back with another amazing science tutorial video and I'm Coach Spivey joined with my son Jordan Spivey and today we're going to be looking at Ecology 101. So let's begin. So what is ecology? Ecology is the scientific study of interactions between organisms and their environments focusing on energy transfer throughout the ecosystem. And ecology is a science of relationships so we're looking at the interactions of organisms between organisms and their environment. So what do we mean by the environment? The environment is made up of two factors. First, we have biotic factors, which are all living organisms inhabiting the earth. So for example, we have plants, animals, bacteria, fungus, and protists. In order for them to be considered living, they have to have the characteristics of living things. And then secondly, we have abiotic factors, which are the non-living parts of the environment. So for example, the temperature, soil, light, moisture, air, and currents. And if you look over here, also, we have water, soil, air, minerals, and light. And so that's the difference between living and non-living or biotic and abiotic factors. Biotic factors are the living things in the environment. Abiotic factors are those non-living things in our environment. So now let's take a look at our levels of organization. And we'll start off from our smallest level of organization, which is the organism. And then if we have a group of organisms, they form a population. And then if we have a group of populations that live together, we have a community. And then we have a group of communities living together with the living and non-living factors in that environment, then we'll have an ecosystem. And then if we combine all of our ecosystems together, we have the biosphere or our whole planet Earth. So let's look at organisms first. So an organism is any unicellular or multicellular form exhibiting all the characteristics of life and or an individual. So for example, this bacteria right here would be an organism. This insect or centipede right here would be an organism. And then this tiger right here is an organism. All three of these are examples of organisms. And then we move next to a population, which is a group of organisms of one species living in the same place at the same time that interbreed. And they produce fertile offspring. That means they produce offspring that are able to have their children, have children of their own. And then they compete with each other for resources. For example, food, mates, shelter, and other items as well. And then we move up to community, which is several interacting populations that inhabit a common environment and are interdependent. So if you notice, this would include humans, animals, insects, bacteria, it would include birds as well. So you got a group of different populations living together in the same environment. And then as we move up to an ecosystem, this will be the populations in a community and the abiotic factor factors with which they interact. So as, for example, an ecosystem would be a marine environment. So the marine environment would include the biotic, which would be the fish, the sharks, and all the plants. And then it would include the abiotic resources as well, which would be the water and the temperature. And then if we look at another ecosystem, we can look at a terrestrial biome right here. So this is an example or a picture of a rainforest. Notice in a rainforest, you have the biotic factors, which are going to be the trees, the plants, the organisms like the birds, insects, and animals. And then you're going to have the abiotic factors like the air temperature and this water that's coming down this waterfall in the back. And then as we move up to our last part, we will have the biosphere, which is the life supporting portions of earth composed of air, land, fresh water, and salt water. And it's the highest level of organization. So the biosphere would include all of the ecosystems on the earth and it would include all of the biotic and abiotic factors on our planet. So now let's take a look at the feeding relationships in ecology. And there are three main types of feeding relationships. First, we have the producer-consumer relationship where we have the plants and we have the organisms that eat the plants like a cow. And then second, we have predator-prey relationships. So for example, we would have a lion and we would have a gazelle. And then third, we have a parasite-host relationship. So this could be a tick sucking the blood of a human or another host. 
So another look at feeding relationships, a consumer, which is going to be all of our heterotrophs, and they have to ingest food containing the sun's energy. And they have to feed on other organisms to get their energy. So all consumers would include herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, and decomposers. So let's take a look at our producer, which is going to be all of our autotrophs, which are plants and trees. They use energy from the sun to make food for themselves in the process of photosynthesis. And they are at the bottom of the food chain. So let's take a look at our two types of consumers. First, we have our primary consumers, which are going to be our herbivores. And these are the organisms that eat plants, like this cow right here in this picture. And then we have our secondary or tertiary consumers. And these will be your prey animals or carnivores. And these are organisms that prey on other animals or other organisms in order to get their energy. So first we have our herbivores and they eat plants. And they are organisms that feed on plants. So for example, we have our horse right here, our rabbit, our giraffe, our koala bear, and we have our elephant. All of these organisms feed on plants in order to get their energy. And all of them would be considered classified as herbivores. And then we have our consumers such as carnivores and they eat meat or eat other organisms. And these would be your predators and they hunt prey or organisms for food. So for example, in this video right here, you are looking at a praying mantis which actually has a snake and is actually hunted and preyed on the snake and is actually eating the head snake as the video progresses. So take a look at that again. Look at this large praying mantis and it's preying on this snake and it has to consume this snake in order to obtain or get its nutrients or energy. And now let's take a look at our second type of carnivore and they eat meat as well but these are known as scavengers. And the main difference between regular carnivores and scavengers is that scavengers feed on carrion or dead animals. Regular carnivores like to feed or hunt on living animals while scavengers like to feed on dead animals. And then another consumer would be an omnivore and omnivores eat both plants and animals. So for example, this raccoon right here and this human man right here, notice he has the potato, he has the steak, and he also has the salad. So he has both plants and animals that he's feeding on. And both of these organisms would be considered om omnivores because of this. So let's take a look at our last consumer, which are going to be our decomposers. And decomposers break down the complex compounds of dead and decaying plants and animals into simpler molecules that can be absorbed. So we take a look at this picture right here. Our primary decomposers are fungi and bacteria. And fungi and bacteria break down dead and deca decaying plants and animals and return these nutrients back to the soil. And when they return these nutrients back to the soil, plants actually absorb and use these nutrients in order to help them grow. And that's how decomposers help with the cycling of matter and help with the cycle, the overall cycle of life because they take that dead decomposing material, return it back to the soil and it helps the plants grow and the cycle starts all over again. So now it's time for your check for understanding and you're going to answer the following questions using your knowledge of ecology. I'll be coming around to each of your desks and checking on your work and your materials to make sure that you're understanding the concepts of ecology. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Coach Spivey, signing off my son Jordan Spivey. I hope this tutorial on ecology was beneficial and helpful. Make sure you have a wonderful, awesome, prosperous, positive day. Peace.